So I thought it would be useful um, in preparation for our musician models on Monday to do a little bit of revision of hands. And I'm going to work with some photographs of some musicians' hands. I'm going to revise the usual advice on how to construct a hand. And then I'm going to look a bit at simplifying these hands because um, you're likely to be especially once you produce a painting, you're going to be working on a fairly small scale with these hands as part of a whole musician figure. So um, the steps, as ever, are wrist, wrist. So I've just done a little bit of an arm here, a narrow wrist, and then going from the wrist to the knuckle. So the hand is going up. And then there's just a bit of the knuckle. There's the knuckle of three fingers coming at that sort of angle. So I've gone from wrist to knuckle to finger shape. And I'm just doing a rough kind of outline to that finger shape. And then if I want to draw individual fingers, I'm going to go from the knuckle line to the tip of that shape. So there's one a little finger here which I think is often particularly significant with a violin. Uh, and the next one there. One here that comes from that knuckle down. And then the first finger is a little bit sort of independent like that. So I've got quite a large gap here. So my finger shape wasn't very well no, I've confused myself. There should be another line here for that finger. There we go. So my gap's not so bad now. So wrist, knuckle, finger shape. I'm drawing some fingers. Uh, and then lastly, the thumb. And because of this particular view, that's the heel of the hand. And then the thumb is behind here and will appear in the gap between the first, between the, the smallest finger and the third finger. And also significantly, because this hand is holding a bow, it really helps to put the object that the hand is holding into the drawing, because it makes sense of what, what the fingers are doing. So something like that. So that's just meant to be a little bit of a, a sort of um, deconstruction, construction of the hand. I can take this drawing a little bit further. I want to smudge some of the gaps, uh, smudge some of the, the tone. I maybe want to slightly revise these fingers. Now that I've found their positions. And I might also think a bit about emphasis. I think I would be inclined to emphasize the little finger and um, maybe the first finger. So that's uh, designed, uh, intended to be a little bit of an explanation. I can elaborate on that. But as I say, you're going to be working with um, probably much smaller hands and the requirement really is to simplify so maybe i should just try a slightly smaller version of this so i'm emphasizing the narrow wrist i'm coming up a bit more to the knuckle and then i'm just going to try rather than defining each finger i'm just going to use a line for each finger so first second little finger and no we're well not first sorry this is the first I'll save the first till last and i'll complete the little finger and connect it with the heel of the hand and put in the thumb and do a little bit of modeling now i think that almost works Let's see. So there's the bow. 
So as I say, I'm thinking that you're going to be producing paintings. You might have sev several figures um, and the hands in those uh, in, in those paintings are going to be small and not not have much definition. I'm going to leave that one there and try another. So here's the left hand position. And again, I'm starting with a bit of the arm, which I'll emphasize how it narrows at the wrist. And then so going from the wrist to the knuckle, and I think the knuckle could almost be on a sort of horizontal line. So again, I'm doing a bit of a construction, which I'll hope to then um, repeat as a more simplified version. So um, wrist to knuckle, finger shape, something like that. And again, I think I'm gonna go for the second finger first because I think the first finger is a little bit behind the second finger and the third finger and then the gap the negative shape between first and second so that's constructing it to make it uh, to refine it I think there's a number of things to do as I've said, I think it helps to put the instrument in to show why these fingers, you know, or show that these fingers are making contact with something. And then I think it probably helps to model parts of the hand as well. So we've got a nice kind of dark plane on the back and on the back of the wrist and the arm. So to put some of that in, and model that hand a bit more, maybe to change some of my dimensions slightly. Because this hand is turned away, so we can see all of the little finger, and then the other fingers are somewhat one behind the other. So on that scale, not too difficult to construct but what if I was to simplify it a bit more I mean I'm really repeating myself here but trying to do it on a smaller scale I think particularly getting the little finger and then trying again just some lines for the other fingers that's a little bit more successful than my right hand attempt, I think, but helped a little by getting the instrument in, so the negative shapes and also the position. So I'm doing these in a fairly tiny way and as, again, as ever, with hands, it's very much the, the sort of emphasis that you place towards the end. So I think that might help firstly to just darken that instrument. The hand isn't as dark as the instrument, but there might be one or two darker marks like the gap between the little finger and the next finger. And maybe I want to just get a little bit more of a Find that outline there. None of these are looking that healthy. I think need, they need a bit more refining. Uh, and that's what hands are all about. So I could get that back a bit better, I think. So here's a cello, um, the left hand for the cello. So a narrow wrist. And, and the wrist and the arm giving some direction, that's important. So then I'm going to go straight to the knuckle. And actually this is the first time I think we've seen a thumb, so I can mention thumbs. But constructing that, I'm going from the wrist to the knuckle. That's the line of the knuckle, which I've made a bit more of a curve. I'm doing a finger shape. 
is very intricate. And then I'm going to go, and it often seems to be the way with these string instruments. I want to do the second finger first, because that's the most visible. And I've gone from the knuckle out to the tip of the finger shape. The first finger is a little bit, be I don't need that, but a little bit behind uh, the second finger. The third finger is sort of inverted that position and then the smallest finger isn't playing a chord at the moment so uh, and then the thumb there's a little bit of an extra sort of hinge there and the thumb comes out points outwards from there so again I can model this bit of shadow on the side of the wrist and the hand and I could go further to refine those fingers and the, um, it's not a fretboard, but the, the neck of the cello might also help. But again, you see, as I do that, those hands, uh, those fingers at least, are kind of disappearing a bit. So this is important with hands, and it could be even in the case with simplified hands, that coming back and doing, adding a little bit of emphasis in certain places uh, is what's going to bring them back. There might be some erasing as well. Um, so again, to you know, simplify that, I think I'm, I'm overstating. I'm repeating myself too much, but let's just do it. And really, I think what you'll see, what you're getting from my advice on fingers is to try them as lines. And maybe there's one that needs uh, needs to be made, you know, formed slightly more. Maybe you've got that gap. Negative gap. So I'm trying to experiment, really demonstrating to you how, really what's crucial, I suppose. You know, what when you're working on these hands on a small scale... You're looking for um, the essential elements. The cello right hand might be um, more straightforward. So I'm actually going to start up here at the elbow because we've got a very foreshortened lower arm. And that takes us straight away to the wrist, out to the knuckle. And then let's just, I mean, if that is the finger shape, let's just do lines. Maybe lines and tips. Some shading. And some negative shapes. And finally, a trumpet. So just got a wrist here. This is obviously a side view. The knuckle is there. So wrist to the knuckle. I've left out the thumb because that comes last. Finger shape. Then you can draw from the knuckle to the fingers. That one bends away. And that one's a lot shorter. And then the thumb on its own kind of hinge and disappearing into the instrument. So that's where we need the, um, the negative shape or the contact with the, the instrument as well to make sense of that. Uh, here we 
go. And then the other hand uh, on top of the the keys really is just fingers. So I just go straight for the finger shape. And then out of that keys a bit higher. I want to bring those 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 fingers. Now Obviously, I would go on developing these, and in the case of this hand, we've got, you know, fingernails, for example. But on the scale that you're working, um, I think we're going to be reducing it to, you know, this sort of thing. And having the connecting shapes, negative shapes of the instrument, uh, a certain amount of tone even, because this whole here, whole area here between the keys is the inside of the hand and is darker. And so um, that's, that's going to help explain that. So there they are. A number of examples then of different hand positions for uh, these uh, string and uh, wind instruments that we'll be working with in the studio on Monday. Some of them are better than others. I think the right hand cello needs definitely needs a bit of work on it. Um, I didn't mention pointy fingers. I talked about fingers as lines, but if you are going to uh, draw fingers in any more a more substantial way then tapering them is often a good plan so there they are we'll have our models in the studio on monday and i will be encouraging you not only to draw good hands but to look at ways of really simplifying them so that you're well prepared for your compositions uh, featuring musicians from the rehearsal and from the model session.